I call this meeting, special meeting of the Waitley Cultural Council to order. And we're here to discuss um, how we should handle requests, and they should be requests for changing um, approved um, programs that uh, we have funded as a cultural council such as the, the situation we have right now with um, a program taking place at the library virtually um, that we weren't consulted on. So um, I don't know, we could probably- you, could, could, you, uh, could you just back up and, I mean, I know you just referred to this case, but could you just back up and just review sort of what the assumptions were in the first place and why this is a problematic Right. Um, when we approved our 2020 grants, for example, there was no COVID and we approved programs that oh, were to okay. be concerts, et cetera, lectures in, in place. Then after COVID, we were given some alternatives given the, that we couldn't safely um, gather in person. Um, so the um, what the Massachusetts Cultural Council offered was that you could approve changes to programs um, and changes to dates and programs um, given COVID. If anybody wanted to put on a program, say virtually, or uh, made other changes to to um, go forward without putting people at risk then they had to come to their cultural council to get. Okay, so that was first. That was the directive from the state. Right. Okay. So I believe, I don't think we necessarily need to vote on it, but can, um, we should send the artists remind, a reminder email. And I think it can just be a BCC email to all who received a, a grant in 2020 for 2020 events that have been postponed that if they want if they decide they need to make changes to the program that they need to contact us so i i have one more question about this so there were as i remember there were at least sort of two funding categories one was we dealt directly with the artist you know for whatever that program was and the other was we dealt really with a, 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 an organization like the library or whatever. So I'm thinking that if we gave money to the library <clears throat> or the historical uh, society or whatever to sort of organize the program, is it really up to us to get involved with what they're doing? Um, it's the well, cultural council we're supposed to approve. Right. Not only that, but there aren't that many cases. I mean, in the case of the library, for example, and the historical society, the proposals came from the artists. So we're funding the artists, but okay, that's the, we're okay, doing that's it for no, yeah, right. organizations that we know and love in our community. Okay. Um, so, yeah, there are a couple such as the um, racial justice rising thing that we approved to them and they hire whoever they hire to put on their monthly programs. Um, and the Waitley, uh, Friends of the Waitley Library, we just gave them pots of money for various events. They haven't told us who they're going to get, but anyway, right. that's where it stands. So yeah, I think I was, we need to let both was, know. My, my question was about those pots of money, you know, where we didn't really specify anything specifically and I'm a little confused about what we're supposed to do in that case. You know, isn't it up to the library to, to make sure that the situation is, I mean, we didn't give any money specifically to an artist in those cases, right? No, that's not correct. The library, we only funded artists. We never funded the library. Oh, okay, I thought there was some cases. Of and the same with the senior center. We funded artists, not the senior center. Okay. And the historical society, we only funded artists, not the historical society. Right. But right. I think both parties 
need to know that this is the yeah, right fair enough, fair enough, sure. Um, okay, thanks. So any other questions before we go into the two agenda items? If the, um, if the artist makes a change in, in the circumstance, do they need to contact their sponsor? Can, will their sponsor need to contact say, the library or the senior center? Will they need to contact as well or just the artist? I think all of us need to be involved. I mean, they could, hmm. how should the order in which this should be done? Does anybody have a feeling well, for this? Would... I mean, in this case, the artist um, contacted the library. Nobody contacted us. I just found out that this program on the um, attracting beneficials was on the library calendar and nobody contacted the cultural council. So I assume that an artist who is doing something at the behest of the library should contact the library, but maybe both yeah. should check with us to make sure it's okay. Yeah, I think as far as what we're trying to we're trying to take care of our obligation and uh, the artists would be obligated to check with us if that's okay. And one of the things we can say to them is, well, is it okay with the library, the senior center, the historical society, whoever else it was? Presuming that's yes, then I think if they and their uh, sponsoring organization are both on board, there's absolutely no reason why we should stand in the way. Um, and I think part of the point of the meeting is to make uh, an easy path for that so we don't have to have a meeting with the quorum every time somebody changes right. from in person to remote on the 2020 um on the 2020 events are there does that any seem like a reasonable summary that's good is there any cases where it's anything other than going from in person to online is that the only change that we're anticipating at this point um well, there's changes in dates, of course, postponing to later in the year, but I don't think we're going to worry about that. No, I don't Nobody worry about cares. That. So I think we should be concerned with um, the fitness of the proposed venue change from, say, in person to online is probably all I can think of yeah. for what people are going to be doing. Um, yeah. They could do other other things that I haven't imagined. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. whether, you know, for I, little... Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. As far as I read the guidance, um, we're supposed to make sure that it meets, substantially meets the goals and presentation of the project as originally funded, whether it changes a date or a venue or a presentation we agreed to fund a specific type of project. And as long as the change doesn't wreck that, as the funding body, we give it a thumbs up and then they figure out the details. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sure. Was that so worth interrupting you for? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, you're much clearer. I was just kind of <laughs> making it up as I went along. So that's... <laughs> That so, sounds... so we are, we are, I think we are most concerned if the program itself changes. In mm. other words, from um, uh, presenting the love life of bees to how frogs manage living in ponds, that would be something that we would be interested in giving a yay or a nay to. But I don't see why, if there's a program that is going to be using um, a, vi a visual presentation rather than an in-person one, I don't think that, you know, maybe a pro forma, yeah, okay, you're doing that, that's fine. But I don't think we need to get involved in that kind of a change. Um, and does anybody have a feeling as to whether there are certain audiences for which a change would not be appropriate? For example, if it were for the senior center, are we um, relatively certain that the people who would have been attending have online access to watch a program and experience it? 
I would be concerned at the senior center that most of those, many of the seniors probably wouldn't show up in the first place, barring the circumstances of what we were dealing with currently. So right. either way, the audience may be, numbers may be down regardless. And yeah. we're under special mm -hmm. circumstance with the um, situation at mm -hmm. hand. Um, yeah. But I think as far as the senior center is concerned, I'd be cons I'd be curious to know whether people would actually be able to show up. I know mo hopefully most of them get vaccinated, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're still not at risk sometimes. You know, we're we're not going to really know that for another yeah. year or so. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, the other one I can think of, and again, I'm not even sure we want to get involved, but it, it occurs to me there was one uh, sort of a, a library program where it was children with a woman doing storytelling. And the fact that it's in person is a big part of the, the fun of a, sh a program like that. Yes. Whereas sitting at home, you know, by yourself in your room watching the TV, I'm sorry, it's just not as much fun. So, you know, maybe we, could we suggest in cases like that, could you try to do it later in the year when you could do it in person or something along those lines. Again, I'm not even sure we want to go there, but you know, that's the other thing I could think of where an in-person thing really is part and parcel of the fun of the program. Right. Um, I, I would hesitate to make an advanced judgment about the ability of our artists to be creative. Yeah, fair um, enough, good point. I've got my my wife is up in the public schools and teachers are being extraordinarily creative about right. how they interact with their classes virtually. So yeah. I, I think it yeah, can, that's a good point. there can be some good stuff happening that we might not anticipate. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I tend I, to agree I mean, with, with what I'm doing is that if as long as the program is the content doesn't change, and all we're talking about here is going from in-person to online or some variation of that, then it's just an automatic approval. I agree with you. Yeah, I would say as long as the content and the audience reach right. doesn't change. Right. The yeah. benefit to the community. However they figure out, they can do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So can I make a motion then? Um, can I make a, a motion that the Whaley Cultural Council author <coughs> authorizes the officers to review and approve or disapprove the proposed changes with the guidelines we've discussed today without having to have the whole Cultural Council meet to approve uh, these kinds of changes? Yeah, that um, sounds good. That's Would those bit. meetings need to be on Zoom or can we do it via email if we have? We, yeah, we don't. This is to not have to have a meeting on Zoom. Well, I mean, we could have a meeting on Zoom if we wanted to, but we could presumably do a lot of it by email. And if we come across one where we don't know if it meets the guidelines, we always have the option to go and meet with the whole council. But I would say uh, it seems like we, what, I'm, what we're hearing is look at the content and look at if you're just changing the manner in which it's delivered, the Cultural Council is generally fine with that. And you'd just be delegating the authority to do that to a smaller group so that we don't have to meet as a group of six like we do today. To, to do something that everybody already agrees is, is pretty uh, easy to do, pretty easy to approve. Okay, right. second. Second. And I guess we need a um, roll call vote. Um, so yeah. on the, um, um, shall the Waitley Cultural Council authorize its officers <clears throat> to review and approve or disapprove proposed changes to events for which the council has approved grants? Is that the um, motion? Um, yes. yes. Uh, Joyce? Aye. Um, Rena? Yes. George? Yes. Rich? Agree. Julie? Yes. And Nancy? Yes. It's unanimous. I keep wanting to call Joyce Brian, but I. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. I, should, I, I left the meeting at first because I thought, oh, Brian's meeting is running over. I better give him time to finish up. <laughs> anyway, okay. So we passed that. So then I had put down a second agenda 
item and we've already basically discussed this. So um, can I change the motion to read something like- um, you know, I don't think we need a new motion. Okay. We've right. already, we've had the discussion already. Yeah, and there there was was audience no reach and benefit, yeah. Okay, audience does not matter. Um, as yeah. long as they're, they cover it. Great, yeah. all right, I think we can, I'm, uh, can I? I can't make a motion to adjourn. Oh, I uh, move we adjourn. Uh, I'll second. second. Okay. We, um, okay. We and another roll call vote, or can we just say? Please mm, roll call it. vote, me. All right, Joyce. <gasps> uh, Rena? Yes. George? Yes. Rich? Yes. And Julie? Yes. And I say I too. So we're. We're done, but great meeting with you all. And yes. uh, I'm glad we got through this. I will send an email to, um, to let's see, our librarian and uh, the first person who made a change to say we approve, I guess. Um, nobody minds about that. And then Julie um, uh, and George, if you could yeah. maybe put out an email to the 2020 people, and then the 2021 letters will just include this, correct? Yeah. Yeah, that, no, that makes sense, right? Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll touch All base right. with you then next week. Um, you said, Julie, is that still good? Yeah, yeah, okay. sounds great. All right, All right. Well, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna stop recording.